you have questions? Do you need answers? The Pastor Study will help you find those answers through God's Word. Our teacher today is Pastor Tom Brock. The Pastor Study is sponsored by pastorstudy.org. So grab your Bible and join us for The Pastor Study. Well, welcome to the Pastor's Study. I'm Pastor Tom Brock, and we kind of have a different show today. This is Tom Pritchard of the Minnesota Family Council. Welcome, Tom. Good to be with you. And today we're going to talk about the whole homosexual marriage issue. Now, our program originates in Minneapolis, where this has become the big issue for this coming year. But I, now we have viewers. We've expanded our TV show to Iowa, North and South Dakota, uh, Nebraska, and also Illinois. So, Tom, uh, this issue, though, isn't just Minnesota-specific. <clears throat> For instance, tell us what our friends in Iowa have had to endure. Well, a couple of years ago, the Iowa Supreme Court uh, ruled that uh, their marriage law was unconstitutional because it limited it to a man and a woman, and basically threw that out and imposed uh, same-sex marriage on that state. On the whole state. Yeah, and interestingly enough, then the voters came back in 2010 and when those three of the judges were up for justices were up for re-election, uh, they were thrown out. So, do you think? So, how would they undo homosexual marriage in Iowa? Well, they're either going to have to pass a constitutional amendment, which is a very um, extensive process, or they're going to have to get another case up to the Iowa Supreme Court when they have a court which will be more friendly. Now, your group, the Minnesota Family Council, is fighting to get a constitutional amendment to protect from happening. I mean, what, they, what the liberals say on this is, well, marriage is not legal anyway for homosexuals in Minnesota, so why even bother with this? Why bother with it? Well, we just talked about it in Indeed. Iowa, and not only in Iowa, but many other states where the courts have uh, overturned their marriage laws, in a sense, having a few judges, uh, like, for instance, Massachusetts, four judges imposed on that state same-sex marriage redefinition. So we want to make sure that the voters, the people of Minnesota, have a say in this. And uh, our polls show that people really want to have a say in this. And this if you're not from Minnesota, the good news is, finally, because we now have a Republican state Senate, finally we got it passed that the voters will be able to vote in Minnesota on this amendment when? Yeah, it'll go on the ballot in November of 2012, so it's about a year and a half down the okay, road. And and there's going to be a lot of money spent on both sides on this issue. Yeah, it's, it'll be a very uh, uh, debated issue, uh, and we're looking forward to it. We think it's important that people of Minnesota talk, have a conversation about this issue, and really talk about the importance of marriage. Well, let me tell you why we're doing this program. Last night, I turned on Channel 2 here in the Twin Cities, public television, paid for by our tax dollars. They had yet another homosexual show promoting homosexual marriage. They've never had a show on public television in the Twin Cities, giving the conservative viewpoint. It's always tilted toward the left. And with Oprah always promoting homosexuality, Ellen and her talk show always promoting homosexuality, and the sitcoms on ABC, CBS, etc. We wanted to do a program giving you the ability to know how to respond to some of this propaganda we get all the time. So Tom, I'm literally going to play the devil's advocate now. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, just ask you some questions. Let me, uh, question number one. Who does it hurt? It doesn't hurt heterosexual marriage if you let two homosexuals get married. So who does it really hurt to let two homosexuals get married? Yeah, they oftentimes will say, how does it hurt your marriage? And I will say, well, I've never said it does hurt my marriage. But what it does is it redefines the institution of marriage, which is the foundation, the bedrock of society. And that has implications far beyond uh, just that definition or allowing a gay couple to get married. It redefines it for everybody. And we see in other states where it's had impact on what's taught in the schools, uh, the, the religious freedoms of individuals, uh, business owners. Uh, for instance, in New, in New Mexico, uh, a photographer was uh, approached by a, a lesbian couple to photograph their union ceremony. 
she says, I really can't out of conscience, and says, I'll refer you to some other photographers. Well, she was sued. Mm -hmm. Well, that would only increase in a situation where the law of the land is now recognized as same-sex marriage. So it, it has far-reaching repercussions. Sure does. In Boston, the Archdiocese of the Catholic Church had to close down their adoption and foster parent services because they were f being forced by the state to put children, orphans, into gay, lesbian couples' homes. So now they're, they're closed. Yeah. Um, all right, let's, let's ask this question, being the devil's advocate. Um, but who are you to take these people's rights away? Doesn't a man have a right to marry a man? Well, marriage has always been, and I think this is important to understand what the nature and purpose of marriage is. Marriage has always been between a man and woman throughout history. And the reason that is, is it's, it's rooted in who we are as human beings, that to have children, you have to have a mother and a father. You can't have a child without a mother and a father. And the state sees that as so important to the well-being of society. The next generation, it's the, uh, the bearing and the raising of children are done. The best, best environment is with a mother and a father, and the state has an interest in protecting that. Now, the, uh, when you redefine that, it, uh, it throws out the notion you need a mother and father. If, if marriage is defined as any two individuals, uh, same sex, opposite sex, then the, uh, the state will now be promoting something different than that notion. In fact, it will be opposed to the notion that children need a mother and a father. Mm -hmm. And what, in fact, will come against those who will attempt to promote that notion. And, if we're and that's going to have wide-ranging repercussions on children. on children. And that's the reason the state has an interest in promoting marriage. And the reason we want to put this in to the people is that we can protect it from activist judges. The only way you can protect against the judges, let's say in Iowa, is to get a constitutional amendment in your state constitution. All right, devil's advocate again. But Tom, recent studies show that children are just as healthy raised by two men as a man, a man and a woman. Well, you have, you, first of all, you have to look at these studies that uh, they're very uh, recent. They're uh, not random studies. They're not scientifically based because you have so few couples. But uh, the evidence suggests that, frankly, within the, these uh, homosexual households, children are more likely to identify with homosexuality and lesbianism. Jody Foster. Because, you know, that's the role modeling. It, it makes sense. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, even, even uh, gay, pro-gay organizations recognize that the nature of homosexuality is complex, it uh, has environmental factors, and when you have a gay couple. So, I mean, th those are factors well, so we need to consider. Well, so what's wrong with, it, it may be two men raising a little boy, maybe he's more uh, prone to become homosexual himself. What's wrong with being homosexual? Well, I, I guess I would back up and, and put the emphasis on what's in the best interest of children in terms of having a mother and a father. And I think gay and lesbian households, by definition, uh, eliminate a mother or a father. And I think the research is very clear that, that children need a mother and a father, and that's the reason the state has an interest in promoting that. Especially if you believe in a creator, which most Americans, most people do. God created us, male and female, to have children. And two males can't have a child, and so it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. for, to call that a marriage and try to raise children in that atmosphere. What, what, oh, Tom, what about this? Um, who are you to put your religion into our Constitution? You need to keep your religion out of our state constitution. How do you respond to that? Well, people oftentimes uh, argue that but, uh, and say marriage is a religious institution, therefore we shouldn't even have it in our laws. But marriage is both a religious and a civil institution. It's recognized by all cultures, all societies throughout history. And uh, you don't have to be a religious person to recognize marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are many agnostic and atheist people who get married. Mm -hmm. and, and if they viewed that as just a religious institution, I'm sure they wouldn't go out and get married. And I think of communist Russia, which was atheist, red China, which is atheist, they didn't have gay marriage. So there are other reasons other than religious reasons for protecting marriage. Yeah, yeah I, th I think I want to point out, though, that this, this issue is not so much about homosexuality. It's about marriage, the institution of marriage, what's in the best interest of children and protecting that institution so that children have the best opportunity to grow up and flourish, mm -hmm. and that's by having a mother and father. So I guess I would emphasize the importance of marriage and protecting that institution because it's in the best interest of society and children. And long-ranging studies have shown that children always do best with a mother and a father in the home, right. as opposed to two men or opposed to a single dad or a single mom. Children tend to do better in school and everything. Am I not right on that? Well, it's just, yeah, I, I think it's just the nature of who we are that 
and, and you know there are probably a lot of uh, single parents listening and it's this isn't to put down single parents mm -hmm. in fact single parents realize how hard better it than is. anybody how, how difficult it is, it is to yeah. raise a child by yourself so yeah. but so I think and the, the purpose of the law is to promote what's um, going to promote the, the common good the ideal the standard we all want to hold up and right. that's children being raised by their biological parents another argument from the more liberal point of view well you know we used to ban interracial marriage and not let a white person marry a black person and we got over that bigotry why can't we get the over the bigotry of letting a man marry a man what's your response to that yeah people often argue well marriage is evolving but I think if you look more closely that analogy really breaks down because in fact the ban on interracial marriage and the effort to redefine marriage through recognizing same-sex unions as marriage are both anti-marriage and the reason is is the ban on interracial marriage artificially kept apart certain men and women based on the color of their skin, which is a neutral, morally neutral, immutable trait. So they, that artificially kept apart individuals, men and women, from marriage. So that was anti-marriage. Well, same-sex marriage redefines the institution by eliminating the idea that a man and woman is integral to the understanding of marriage. Mm -hmm. So they were both anti-marriage, but I, I think I think this is important for people to realize that where this goes ultimately, because uh, if same-sex marriage is legalized, recognized, those who support traditional marriage will be viewed as the new bigots and mm -hmm, racist, mm -hmm. and they will be treated that way, mm -hmm. uh, in by society. And in fact, the state it's will. already started. In fact, the state will. Yeah, it's already started. But now they'll have the force and the power of the of law the behind them pushing that on people and so I think people need to realize the repercussions of redefining marriage and it's not a kind of a live and let live thing you know where if a gay couple wants to get married they can get married no this changes the whole institution well, and the state will now have a vested interest in promoting and uh, this new understanding of marriage and in a sense fighting against anything which would challenge that in Maine recently they passed a transgendered law in Maine that men who dress as women and women who dress as men can use whatever bathroom they want. Some in the legislature there are trying to undo that because people wanting to protect their bathrooms and not letting a little girl be in a restroom with a man uh, are, are seeing that people should let the biological sex, not the person's perceived sex, but the biological sex determine that to protect children and without a lawsuit from the government. So even as this stuff unrolls, it just gets stranger and stranger. Well, I think by definition, if you redefine marriage to eliminate the need for a man and a woman, it becomes you're basically promoting a genderless society. Mm -hmm. the, the notion that there is no difference between men and women, and that's not true. I and mean, obviously, that doesn't mean you can't promote equal rights in terms of access to jobs and other things. But to, to try to obliterate the notion that there is a difference and that, in fact, children need both a mother and a father because they both bring unique things in the life of the child is really important. Okay. And, and that's one of the consequences. If you redefine marriage, you're going to basically have the state imposing that new vision on society. All right. Another devil's advocate question. But isn't marriage all about love? It doesn't matter if you're male or female, just as long as you love each other. What would you say to that? Well, I think, again, that's, that's kind of a subtle way, maybe not so subtle way, of trying to redefine what marriage is. Mm -hmm. Marriage certainly involves a loving, committed relationship, but it also, integral to that definition, is a man and a woman. And when you, when you eliminate that notion and just say it's a loving, committed relationship, you've really redefined it radically. And, and the implications of that go far beyond just allowing two individuals of the same sex to marry. Well, what about polygamous relationships yes. where you may have a loving committed relationship between multiple individuals or let's say a, a parent and their adult child mm -hmm. or two siblings those can also be defined as loving committed relationships so are they marriage uh, they're not right it's, yeah. those aren't marriage I, and I think that for people need to realize that the issue here is protecting the integrity of the institution of marriage mm -hmm. Now, you know, they, they bring in other issues like hospital visitation That's, and things. Larry, there's another one. How can you deny someone letting their gay lover be at their bedside while they're dying? How can you deny that? Well, clearly I think they should have the right to visit. Anybody should be able to decide who can visit them, whether in a hospital or uh, make medical decisions for them. But you don't have to redefine marriage to do that. You can address those issues. In fact, you can do it now under law that you can... Uh, designate a person to visit you in the hospital mm -hmm. or you can have 
designate somebody to make your medical decisions. And that's true for a wide yeah. range of people, whether yeah. or not you're gay or lesbian. It can be any two individuals. So you don't have to redefine marriage to ensure that people can visit them in, when they're in the hospital. Tom, let's one more devil's advocate question that we'll get.